Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are really excited to be here with you virtually today. My name is Nicole Hemingway, and I am the CEO of the US Pain Foundation, as well as the co-founder of the Invisible Project. And we are here to introduce our second edition on healthcare disparities of the Invisible Project magazine. For those of you that might not be familiar with this program, it is US Pain's flagship program. And the Invisible Project is a print and online publication that shows the reality of life with pain through stories, personal photos, and educational articles. And the goal really is to highlight individuals' experiences with chronic pain and why people who live with it need and deserve more help, treatment options, and research. Um, so to learn more about the project and the program as a whole, we hope you will go and visit invisibleproject.org. Um, all of our previous magazines, as well as this magazine, are free of charge. And we also have a way that you can subscribe to receive future editions automatically. And again, all magazine copies, copies are always free. Next slide, please. So it has been um, over a decade since the Invisible Project first began. Um, it was really, really incredible for us. So in total, we have published uh, 21 issues, which is including this new one that we will be talking about today. Um, we also distributed more than 120,000 copies to patients, caregivers, and healthcare providers. We have featured over 200 patients and their loved ones, and have included dozens of educational articles from experts on topics that matter most to people with pain, as well as we've spotlighted a lot of organizations that provide services for them and fight for them on a day-to-day -day basis. So it is really incredible how much we have accomplished in over a decade. And I really just wanna take a moment to thank every past, current and future participant for your courage to be part of this project. Thank you for sharing your stories with us. We truly appreciate it. And we want you to know that you are making a big difference. So with me today is Rebecca McKenzie, who is the new director of the Invisible Project. Welcome, Rebecca. We are so excited to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm really glad to be here. Awesome. So today I wanted to, first of all, ask you a couple of things. Why were you so excited to join US Pain Foundation and take on this role as our director of the Invisible Project? And also, why is it so important that people share their personal experiences? Absolutely. So my background is in journalism and in newspapers, and I did that for about a decade. And my favorite thing was always um, just the features and the individual stories and, and finding everyday people who had a really incredible story to tell and giving them a platform to do that. And that's exactly what the Invisible Project and the US Pain Foundation does. And that's why I was so excited to come on board here is because I think that that's incredibly powerful to, um, to give everyday people a voice and um, to let others hear it and to realize that you know, their story is like someone else's story and that they're not alone. And I think that is why it's so important. What we do with the Invisible Project is we are giving people who uh, live with pain and maybe um, think that they are alone or that no one else really understands what they're going through or they've, they've run into barriers or challenges. We're giving them a chance to tell their story on their own terms and then giving just many, many other people a chance to read those stories and realize, wow, you know, I'm not alone. And this isn't something that only I've experienced. There are other people out there like me who understand. And um, I think that that's the, really the magic that the Invisible Project creates with, with every issue that we put out. And that's you know, what makes the work that, that this magazine does so important. I, I totally agree with you. And I think it is really, really important um, that everyday people like myself who live with pain realize that there is something powerful and important about my journey and my story. And I have, my voice has value and it matters. And I can help others by either inspiring them, providing hope, making them just feel less isolated and alone. Um, letting them know that this covers the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're not saying that everybody in this magazine has found answers. Most of them have not, but it's through that struggle and through that daily commitment to um, to live despite pain that we, we triumph and it has helped uh, 
People like me feel connected. It has helped caregivers better understand of what their loved ones go through. It has allowed healthcare providers to have an insight of the patient journey. And it has allowed the people at the top level, our policymakers, to better understand those challenges that we face. And we are so, so grateful for our participants. Um, and I, I think, especially in light of this art, this edition on disparities, uh, it is so important that we, we recognize and we make people's voices heard um, for others. Absolutely. And like Nicole said, just focusing on healthcare disparities in this issue, um, everyone that we feature in this issue has faced barriers and challenges and disparities in healthcare, whether that's because of their race and ethnicity, their gender or sexuality, uh, socioeconomic status, whether they're a really young patient or an older patient, or they live in a rural area. So many of these different factors really affect um, the healthcare and the, the access that people receive. And it's so important to give those populations and those individuals a voice because of all of the times that they've been told no, or they haven't been listened to, or they haven't been believed. And so um, when we are looking at healthcare disparities, which is really on everyone's mind right now because of the pandemic, more so than ever, it's, it's shined a light on what has been going on with um, the barriers that, that people face when they're facing or when they're seeking out healthcare. And we really want to be a part of that conversation and to move past lip service and to continue to hold up and support the people who are fighting every day to close the gap and get rid of these disparities. I think that is perfectly said. Well, thank you so much. Well, as you know, we are all here today to talk about our latest edition of the Invisible Project, which is on healthcare disparities. Next slide, please. One thing that I want to point out, which is new to our magazine this year, is that we have included QR codes on every single article, as well as our profile pieces. And it is so easy. All you, can, all you have to do when you have the magazine in hand, again, they are free of charge. So go to invisibleproject.org to order copies today. Um, but you just hold your camera phone over it and all of a sudden it will pop up with a URL. You can click on it and then automatically you have it available to you um, through the web so that you can either read it or you can share it online. You can pass it on in an email to friends or family or even your healthcare professionals. Um, so we are really excited about adding QR codes and we mm -hmm. hope that it makes it more easy for you guys to find these articles at a later date online and share them as well. Next slide. Another exciting um, addition to this issue is that for the first time, we will also be re releasing this magazine in Spanish. And so please be on the lookout for this. We are hoping to have it available in the next month. Um, but we want to make sure that everybody um, has the availability to read this magazine and be able to um, gain information and education and hope um, from the articles as well as the profile these. Next slide, please. All right, so let's introduce the 12 individuals that are in this current edition. Um, I think, Rebecca, we both can agree that each person provides a very unique perspective and aspect regarding their experiences um, facing healthcare disparities. And again, um, I was moved and compelled by their incredible and articulate way of sharing what they have been through. Um, so with that, I'm going to actually turn it over to you to introduce each of them. Um, but before I do, I just want to say again, for those that are tuning in, we are talking about our newest edition of the Invisible Project magazine, um, which focuses on healthcare disparities. And if you are interested in ordering a copy or subscribing, please go to invisibleproject.org. Everything is free of charge for you guys there. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Nicole. And next slide, please. All right, I'm really excited to introduce you guys to the 12 individuals who we are featuring in this magazine. The first one is Manisha Gupta. She lives with neck, back, myofascial, and multi-joint pain, as well as migraine and neuropathic pain. Manisha has a PhD in social psychology. She has doctors in her family and social circle, and she is an experienced researcher. So she regularly conducts research on her condition. She's very involved in her healthcare 
And despite the fact that she prepares for every appointment and she does a lot of um, background work to learn about the condition she's living with, she often will go to appointments and feel brushed aside by medical professionals. She has repeated difficulty accessing the pain management treatment that she needs. Uh, sometimes she's been told to calm down or that she's too young to be experiencing the pain that she lives with every day. And so because of that, she is a passionate and vocal advocate when it comes to improving treatment of and access for women in BIPOC who are seeking healthcare. And I love this quote from her. She says, it's okay to be difficult and to speak up if your concerns aren't being taken seriously. And I think that's really good advice for um, so many of the individuals that are, that are faced with healthcare disparities. And so today, even as she continues to search for answers for her own pain, Manisha works as an advocate for others and she draws strength from the experiences of other women and individuals of color. Next slide, please. William Hatchett has been diagnosed with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, both of which are digestive disorders that cause chronic pain, as well as rheumatoid arthritis. Throughout a lot of his 30s, his treatment was a patchwork of low-cost options, kind of bouncing from clinic to clinic. And once he was able to access better health care, he began receiving infusions that helped until a clerical error with his insurance um, removed his access to those infusions. So his health worsened and he began doing much worse. And um, I think that this, this statement from him about starting those treatments was really poignant. He says, it's all about access. Um, when he went to his first infusion, he sat next to an older white gentleman who had just been diagnosed with Crohn's. And in the meantime, William had been waiting four years for the same treatment. And eventually William was able to get on a different treatment that has been helping him. But because of what he's gone through in the past, he's very focused on just staying as healthy as he can because he knows that there's always the possibility in the future that he may lose his access to his treatment again. And he is also a great mentor for other individuals who live with the same conditions. Next slide, please. Sharice Hill is our next profilee, and Sharice lives with axial spondyloarthritis, which is a multi-system inflammatory disease that affects the spine, large joints, and sometimes the organs of the body. Sharice is non-binary, but they were socialized as a girl, and because of that, they had difficulty obtaining a diagnosis, in part because a lot of medical professionals thought that their condition was a man's disease. And so instead of getting treatment for their pain, Sharice was often prescribed anxiety medication and just wasn't given the help that they needed for their pain for a long time. And today, after finally receiving a diagnosis because of a lot of hard work on their part to dig into what was going on, Sharice is a vocal advocate, both for others living with this condition and for the non-binary and transgender community. They publish a blog called Being Sharice and are affiliated with several nonprofit organizations that support individuals living with pain. And I think this quote from Sharice applies to so many of those living with pain and the, um, some of the difficulties that they go through. They said, the disability process is dehumanizing, forcing you to define yourself by everything that you cannot do. And I know that that's something that hits home for a lot of our profilees. Next slide, please. Tiffany Porter lives with fibromyalgia, arthritis, tendinitis, polycystic ovary syndrome, and diabetes. And it took years for her fibromyalgia in particular to be diagnosed. And she actually didn't receive a diagnosis until after she had had two unnecessary surgeries and a variety of other treatments that didn't help with her pain. Today, she's a mother of three and she's a passionate anti-racism advocate. She has started groups that provide education and resources to the residents in her area. And she tirelessly campaigns for better anti-racism education as well as curriculum that educates kids about disabilities and illnesses. As someone who is low income, queer, disabled, black, and female, I love this quote from, or Tiffany shared this really powerful statement that I, I really appreciate. She says, when you're disabled, you already are at a lower level. When you add race to it, you're at the bottom of the barrel. And I just think that's, that's a really poignant statement to, um, to some of the things that she's experienced in her life. Next slide, please. Jacob and John Smith are 11 year old twins who both live with pain. They have hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, a disorder that affects connective tissue. And John also lives with migraine and Jacob has several painful digestive disorders. The twins have dealt with health issues for most of their lives, but it took a long time for them to receive these diagnoses in part because medical professionals either dismiss their health issues as being associated with being born prematurely. And in part because they were told that uh, kids who were so young shouldn't be dealing with that much pain. And even now their mom, Mary, continues to fight to access the treatment and the answers that her kids need as they go to school and they try to be kids and participate in activities and, and everyday work to combat assumptions about their pain. And I love this quote. 
I want to be able to play with my twin. And if I'm not well and he is, that makes it more difficult. In some ways, it is also easier, though, because I always have someone that understands me, my twin. I just think that's a really sweet representation of their relationship and how they support each other. Next slide, please. Lori Starr was diagnosed with undifferentiated connective tissue disease, Raynaud's disease, and vertigo in her 20s. And she battled those conditions while she was working on a PhD. And she also battled a lot of um, stigma and stereotypes about her service dog that she had during that time to help her with those conditions. One night while she was working on her PhD, she was attacked in a parking lot and had a traumatic brain injury that also caused her to have headaches and balance issues. And she's a member of the, uh, the a tribal member of the Western Cherokee Nation. And that came into play that night um, with some of the, pre the prejudice that she has faced when she was um, getting in the ambulance and the driver said, what hospital do you want to go to? And she asked to go to the Phoenix Indian Medical Center, which is where she was working. And she knew a lot of the people that worked there. And the ambulance driver laughed and said, oh, you don't want to go there. And she shares that that's just um, a lot of the prejudice that she has received uh, throughout her life because of being a member of the Western Cherokee Nation. Um, she did eventually finish her PhD. It took her a, a lot of years and a lot of support, but she, um, she did that and she was able to start offering pro bono therapy services for families that were facing serious illnesses and other challenges. And even though today her, her pain has made working a challenge, she is continually looking for new ways to continue to help others. Next slide, please. So David Simpson lived an active life working as a video producer and practicing martial arts. And one day he was in a martial arts class and had a kick that went wrong. And that prompted years of increasing pain in his back and neck. He eventually was diagnosed with spinal stenosis and he eventually needed spinal fusion surgery. But because of his freelance work, he didn't have access to great health insurance. And over and over as he went to different clinics, he experienced repeated poor treatment until he began traveling to better parts of the city to see doctors there. And this quote from him, I think is, uh, is really telling. He said, after a lot of failures, I realized it was a geographic issue and I needed to go where the rich people go. So that was something that he experienced while he was just for many years trying to get help for his pain and eventually to have the surgeries that he needed. And today, David continues to live with pain, but he is using his video production experience to work in the nonprofit space to help others. Next slide, please. Mia Robinson lives with a form of sickle cell disease, which is a red blood cell disorder that can cause intense pain crises. She has experienced several other health conditions over the years that have caused her additional, campaign, additional pain, and those became um, even more of an issue and just affected her pain and her health even more after her sister passed away when Mia was 20, and she struggled with her health for a long time after that. Today, she wants to help others that have the same condition, so she started a nonprofit organization called Sickle Cell Awareness 365, which is based in Atlanta, Georgia. And she provides advocacy and she's involved in a lot of different initiatives for others living with pain. And I love this quote from her. She says, it should not matter what one looks like. We are all human, no matter the race, gender, religion, sexual orientation, or socioeconomic status, we all deserve fair treatment. And I think that could really be a rallying cry for, for everyone in this issue. Next slide, please. Kristen Beasley has lived with multiple chronic pain conditions since she was in a severe car accident at the age of 15. She experiences pain in her neck, shoulder, back, and pelvis, and in particular, her pelvic condition, vulvodynia, has opened her eyes to some of the difficulties that women can face when they're seeking treatment for pain. That condition developed for her several years after her crash, but it took quite a bit of time before she received a diagnosis and before she was able to, to get healthcare professionals to listen to what she was experiencing. And I love this quote from her. She says, for anyone who has a chronic illness, it can become your entire world. You need your own thing that gives you some sense of joy and some sense of purpose. And for Kristen, that is taking inspirational photos that she enjoys sharing with others. Next slide, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, Dina Thatchett is our next profilee, and she lives with lupus, but she was dismissed, misdiagnosed, and faced with discrimination for a long time before she learned what was causing her pain. And in fact, she didn't receive a diagnosis until she was extremely ill in the hospital with a severe lupus flare. Um, since that time, as she has kind of settled into the, the treatment that she needs, she has found a place in advocacy 
and has traveled to Capitol Hill to give a voice to others living <clears throat> with lupus, autoimmune diseases, and chronic pain. And I think this statement from her is so powerful. She says, we deserve to have a voice. We deserve to share our perspective and our desires and needs with the people that get to make the decisions about what funding there is, where it goes, and how it's spent. And she is definitely a part of that conversation and, and is really ad, a powerful advocate for others when she um, when she goes to Capitol Hill and, and is a voice for them. And after many years of fighting to have a child and having fertility issues, Dina and her husband now have a young daughter as well. Next slide, please. Our last profilee is Grace Chappelle. Grace lives with hemiplegic migraine as well as idiopathic intracranial hypertension. Both of those cause severe head pain and other symptoms. And in fact, sometimes her attacks are so severe that she loses the ability to speak. She has been belittled and disbelieved by medical professionals. And for years, she tried to hide her pain, even from her family and friends. But today she's vocal about her conditions and has opened up to those who are close to her about what causes her chronic pain and what she needs when she's having an attack. And one of the things that was really important for her was finding a support group that was led by a black woman because that helped her finally feel understood and to realize that, that she's not alone in her journey. And I love this quote from her as well. She says, I talk a lot now because I know what it feels like not to be able to talk. I'm being more aware of all the things in life that I unconsciously may have taken for granted, big or small, because in the blink of the, an eye, it can all be taken away from you. Next slide, please. So those are our profilees. Um, we, we really love all of their stories. We think that each one has a really important story to tell. And we are excited for, for all of you to read those stories if you haven't already. Um, we also have a lot of feature articles in this issue that talk about different topics related to healthcare disparities. And we'd like to tell you a little bit about those as well. Next slide, please. So some of the topics you'll find in this issue include making over-the-counter medications more accessible, rebuilding trust for uh, BIPOC in clinical trials after generations of abuse, creating safe appointments for transgender, non-binary, and gender diverse individuals, the lack of research and the disbelief that continues to follow women's pain, the health stigmas that continue to affect men with pain, particularly BIPOC men, uh, tackling barriers facing children living with pain, and the need to address and not ignore aging individuals' pain. And there are quite a few other articles in this issue as well that cover a, a wide variety of topics pertaining to pain and healthcare disparities. Next slide, please. So none of this, first of all, thank you so much, Rebecca, for going through all of this. Um, thank you. We have been posting inside Facebook links so that you can easily find the profiles of every single person that um, we are highlighting and spotlighting in this particular publication. And we also have a link um, that will quickly connect you to the articles that are featured in here as well. Um, but now we really wanna talk about our appreciation because none of this would be possible um, without certain people that have assisted behind the scenes. So next slide, please. First, we would like to thank our many talented writers, um, as well as our editor, Janet Jay, who um, assisted Rebecca and myself um, along this publication journey. Thank you so much for um, taking the time to uh, connect with our experts to, to meet our incredibly inspiring participants uh, who see the value and are invested and dedicated to this cause of really elevating and amplifying that patient voice and giving us a platform that we can use to um, share with others and to say that we need more options to treat our pain and that we all matter and that we all deserve the same equal access to healthcare. Um, so thank you, thank you all for um, the many hours that you have put forth writing for us and connecting with us and making this the best publication that it possibly can. Next slide, please. We also wouldn't be able to do this without financial support. So we want to thank our platinum sponsor, Johnson & Johnson, for rallying behind us and supporting this very important initiative. Um, and also to our corporate council for their continued support of this program, as well as all of US Paints initiatives. We could not do this without you. Next slide, please. 
And once again, we have to thank our participants. Um, I, I can only speak for myself, but I'm sure Rebecca is going to chime in too. As we were reading through um, the interviews and reading the profile pieces the first time, every single one moved me. I would either tear up, I would just be like, I can't believe how well they could articulate this. And it is incredible. Without your courage, without your vulnerability to put your life um, in public display, we would not be able to do this. Um, you are rock stars in our books. Thank you so very much for your candor, your honesty, your integrity, and your courage. We truly appreciate it. Next slide. So to close out, what we want to make sure that everybody knows is we have a subscribe button on the invisibleproject.org site. And if you type in invisibleproject.org backslash subscribe, you are automatically subscribing to receive free copies of every upcoming magazine. So if you subscribe today, um, let's say you want one copy, that's great. You will get one copy in the mail probably later next week about the healthcare disparities edition. Let's say that you want two, we will send two. If you want 25, because you are gonna be passing them out at either your doctor's offices or at um, maybe a pain awareness event or a library, as many as you want, we will ship to you. We just want to make sure that these publications are out in the masses and that everybody has a chance to read them and to feel inspired and empowered by them. Um, so please go to the website and easily subscribe. And again, I know I've said it a few times, but I just want everyone to know that it is free. You will just receive these magazines and um, we hope that you find them to be as empowering and hopeful as we do, as well as informative. Next slide, please. The last thing too, is that while you're looking at invisibleproject.org, you will see other editions that we have done. The one right before this was on autoimmune diseases. We, as we mentioned, this is our second edition on healthcare disparities. So you can also see our first edition. We have done migraine and headache disease. We have done um, chronic low back pain, rheumatoid arthritis, um, and it keeps going on and on. So if there are other publications that you are interested in, we also have a way that you can order those too through the website. So please go there and look as well. Um, again, Rebecca, thank you so much. I mean, I know how many hours it took to put in to make this what it is. I am so appreciative to everybody tuning in on Facebook. Thank you for being here. I hope you will read these stories. I hope you will share these stories. I hope um, this publication, past publications, and future publications really do make a difference um, in your lives. And um, with that, I am going to end today, but we really appreciate you tuning in. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you all so very much. Please take care, and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye.